I'm James Kirkham, head of Copper 90. It means generally I stick my nose into other people's business. It took a fan-centric perspective right from the start, at a time when it just wasn't kind of done. Now it's been much mimicked and aped to have that kind of point of view from the fans and be on behalf of the fans and be on their side. But six years ago, that was kind of novel. And we, I guess, did it literally by turning a camera around back onto the fans, by going out and creating a football business without rights that was about the fans and the supporters, about everything outside of the 90 minutes. That was where it started. We're trying to change 100 years of sports media. We're not going against kind of two-bit competitors that are perhaps very narrow and channel focused. So, so much about that is exciting and lucky for me to be in the job. Fans have been disenfranchised and disenchanted. They've walked out of Anfield because of rising ticket prices. They are aggrieved at spiraling player wages and agent fees and all of that sort of stuff. And yet they've somewhat been ignored by some of the powers that be for the last decade. Copper 90, fortunately, is here to say what's right, to do what's right, and to provide, I think, content and rich sort of era of storytelling which they are kind of yearning for and looking for. Football fans uh, tell us immediately what they want, and we've always built work around what it is that they want. I guess what I mean by that is it's not like my old advertising world where we're sticking ad out and we might three months later evaluate the performance of the advertising. It's so visceral and real and now we will hear it. I mean we have a show every Monday in this very studio called Comments Below. It quite literally is predicated on the comments that are left and uh, requested from our Copper fam, our audience, every single week. The entire show is built around comment. It's not just reading out a tweet once like you might get on some shows and claiming it's interactive it's absolutely born from it we're fortunate in that brands love the partnership approach in that copper 90 x the brand is a more powerful force it's a collaborative uniting i think presence that audiences believe the lovely thing now is that audiences have brands almost uh in high regard, they see it as almost credibility. There's very few instances where they believe it's kind of selling out. That's because we insist that brands don't sort of buy us, buy us off, they buy into us. It's a very much a collaborative partnership approach where Copper 90 and the brand together gives the audience something special. what's happening right now in sport is exactly what happened in the music industry 15 years ago but we don't have a Napster moment I'm convinced that it is the same level of change exciting seismic shifts going on right now in sport and in football the way we consume it the way you watch your beloved team over the weekend is very different from five years ago and it's remarkably different from 20 years ago and the whole old world order is altering and Copper Knight is very much a part of that. And it isn't that we're just going out entirely to try and kind of break and change and disrupt at all. We are there with the fans, with the people and what they are choosing to do. My eight-year-old boy doesn't turn a telly on anymore. Now, no one's taught him not to, and his mum and dad still do. So you do see a struggle for it. What he does do is open his uh, YouTube on his iPad in the morning, just start searching with what he wants to watch and all of that sort of stuff. Now, we're not aiming ourselves at eight-year-olds, but they're obviously the canary in the coal mine. Um, right now, it is still a part of the diet of a football fan, but it is only a part. In the old days, it was it. It was everything. In my old days, I could only see football at a very specific time on a very specific show. The choice is so plentiful now, and it's so often predicated to on convenience and what works for you. What works for me, for example, is consuming a lot of the news through Twitter, seeing goals as gifts when they happen right there and then, searching them out if I require that. You have to be in the different places. We call it fulfilling a phone moment. It's about 45 seconds generally, and you all might be standing outside having a fag or in a queue, and you're basically scrolling and you've got a thumb stop, nailed something pretty good as a blurb, a little shot in 45 seconds, and that's it. 
it's a very different moment to a beautiful 10 minute sit down dock with your kind of iPad or maybe on a slightly even bigger screen. So it's really important that you un people understand that breadth of, of what people actually want. We've evolved the brand so that it has an even more kind of global feel, if that makes sense. So we are able and equipped to have our Copper 90 Latam, a Copper 90 US. So that works beautifully in a uniform way now globally. The funny thing is when you've got something like Copper 90, it publishes 1500 bits of content a month. So it's, it's like its own marketing machine at the same time. There is cool little sneaky bits of outdoor even that people have really noticed. I think brands born in a digital age that have actually entirely been conceived within literally within online, within digital. I think it's surprising when you then see them exist elsewhere. Your ambitions have got to be almost through the roof and you've got to believe you can get there. And Grandiose ambitions, I think, are a really good thing and because some people do have to make it and some people do have to kind of break that ceiling and so why not you? So borrowing some of that boldness and bravery or audacity and just putting it all in enthusiastically and with passion means that, you know, you get a lot of very excited people trying to do stuff. Um, so I think all of that is about being a challenger. And also when you set about work and you start working on projects and you cre go and create, it is not, it should not be framed in, it's been done before so we probably can't do it. It should be allow young minds to think, yeah, we, I'm sure we can do that better and just go for it. Um, I think all of that starts creating that lovely challenger mentality that you've got to kind of breed and, and got to try and cultivate all the time. You can't be at every game but you want to feel what football is. Uh, we are not trying to create people addicted to their screens. We're trying to be there when they want it and when they need it. On a Saturday, rather than watching Soccer Saturday, maybe, I quite like Soccer Saturday, but maybe rather than watching that, they tune in to Copper 90 because guess what? We've got 30 genuine, excited creators, fans, up and down cities around the UK, showing you the fan scenes, bringing you the excitement from outside the boozer, being under the underpass as they're marching to the game, you feel the football. We've had everyone from Stormzy to David Beckham to Paul Pogba. It's a wonderful, exciting, funny, funny mix of people doing funny stuff, they're loose. They're playing FIFA, they're having a laugh. They're, with people like Poet and Vooj, you break down all barriers of it being an interview. So stuff like that works a treat. And I know that's not always easy for people to kind of just suddenly go and get Paul Pogba for their channel. Um, but obviously, you know, uh, elements like that help. So it's knowing, it's knowing what, you know, what the right strings to pull and making sure that you do that.